Hello fellow engineers and welcome back to Freeways. I had an absolute fantastic time playing this last time. Uh, but this time I wanted to have a little go and just sort of work out how efficiency works in this game. So this is our clover leaf. It got us a 438 efficiency score on this little stopwatch. And so I wanted to try out a few real life four way interchanges and see which ones are best. So the one on screen now, this is the clover leaf interchange. Uh, it's quite it's quite a common one, mainly because it's really cheap. So in highway design, the most expensive part of road building, especially on designs like this, where you're sort of trying to have an individual road for each route is the amount of bridges and not just the amount of bridges the length of the bridges so you can see this one has just got two very short bridges in the middle spanning these two lanes everything else is at ground level or at grade as we like to call it in the uk uh, however this design isn't that efficient uh, in some directions it is so if we say we start on the right and say we're a red car so go north we just turn right and we go straight up and then merge back in there so that's a very efficient route now if we're coming from this way and we want to go let's say we're a pink car so let's follow this pink car you're under the two bridges we go round this loop we then merge back on with these guys cut up that green car <laughs> And then we go over the bridge and straight back down. Uh, however, you'll notice we had to merge with a green car. That's because this, this length of road between the merge and the diverge, and a merge is where you join a road and a diverge is where you leave the road. So this length in the middle with the bridge has got two sort of directions of traffic coming along it. So we're going to get merges with cars coming from the right coming from the south both along that stretch under there but you're also going to get cars coming from the right that don't want to go left they want to go all the way around there so so basically a simple rule is you never want a merge before a diverge because it doubles up the amount of traffic in the middle you always want diverge first and then merge like we got on this little bit so yeah this stretch of road bad this stretch of road good uh, but anyway so this efficiency score is 438 that's what we're going to try and beat so if we come down here and boosh, we've cleared the level. And we're going to try again with some different designs. So I'm going to stick with the Cloverfield sort of shape. But this one's going to have something that we called distributor roads. So if we come straight down and we go straight up on this one. And basically the problem that we had before was everyone was using this middle bit of road to go in all the directions. So what we do, we actually come off here and we do like a parallel road. And then we'll do the same on the right hand side. Let's come out and then back in. Uh, not the most parallel of designs. Yeah, I'll give you that. And we then want to do the same for the left and right, east and west directions. But of course, we want to go up into a bridge. And now I know I can right click. I can just right click. So over there. I ne Did you see that? I nearly bloody clicked that one. I did that so many times last episode. No. Down. And then we'll do the same. So we'll do a slip road off here. Over to there. Up. Across. Down. Merge back in. And then the same for that. So you can see already, we haven't even done all the routes yet. We've literally just done north to south and east to west. Uh, but we got four bridges and they're very long. They span four different lanes of traffic. Uh, and we're not even done yet. We are not even done yet. So to get the Cloverfield thing back in, we do... Say you're coming from 101 east and you want to go to 17 south. You're actually, rather than going along this road with the blues, you'd come off here. So you're on your own little road and then you'd come over the bridge and you get to this point and then you gotta loop around like that now you can see can you see all the pinks they're coming around over the bridge swing a hard one get the old back end out bit of handbrake and they go under the bridges and they're coming down on their own road they're not merging with these guys that are coming north to south now, until this point where they merge back in uh, so we basically just want to do that for all corners so we can do the same for this corner down here do the same for people under there coming around like that so that's network complete but obviously we've still got to do the extra routes and that basically just involves coming off earlier going around and then merging in there so now people coming from the north if they want to go to the west to the blue you can see he just takes a turn off there and he doesn't have to mingle with any other traffic so again we'll come off here mingle into that slip road the trouble this is all jam now because i haven't put these arms in yet so everyone is they're basically going like around a massive roundabout to try and get to where they need to go uh, they don't need to though they don't need to just be patient just wait for me to build my roads right and there we go so i've put all the arms in we've unfortunately got to wait for all this car <laughs> it's proper just stuck now <laughs> Now there you go, one sensible green car. Good work. I'm trying to work out who we're waiting for. I don't think we're waiting for anyone. I think it's literally just stuck. Yeah, it's jammed. Bollocks. 
Sod it. There you go. I press simulate. And we'll see. Is this better? Oh, it's not better. Interesting. And I imagine it's not better because this is an efficiency number. So it's not just getting the highest traffic flow. It's also about the amount of concrete you've used and the complexity. So compared to the original Cloverleaf design, the traffic flow and complexity are actually the same. A little bit surprising. I thought the traffic flow might be slightly higher. Uh, but I think it's because everything sort of, it did get a bit cramped in there. Uh, but the concrete used, obviously with these massive bridges and like basically two extra lanes in each direction. Uh, a lot more concrete used, so efficiency was worse. Okay, so we've still got our original score to beat. This one was no good, so we'll clear this. Boosh. And we're going to go with another one that you may have heard of before. It's called a diverging diamond interchange. Uh, so I'll just sort of draw it up and then you can see how it works. So essentially from this one, we're going to swap over to this side. So now you can see we're actually on where this lane goes. We're going to go all the way down and then we're going to swap back to that lane. So now those guys are coming like this. Over here, we're going to go like that. Do a little bridge over the top, back down again. And again, just hop over the top. Now, I may have cocked that. That looks a little bit wonky. Let's see what this red car does at the end. <laughs> <laughs> he lost his back end a bit, but it was fine. It was fine. Yeah, so you might be looking at this and being like, what the hell are you on about, Matt? That does not look sensible. Uh, but just wait, things will make sense. So the east to west are simple. They're just literally straight across. So we'll come over here. Oh God, I started drifting upwards there. Bridge over those two. Same for this side. Connector in. So there are straight throughs. And then where it gets its name from, the diverging diamond. So if you want to come from the east and you want to go north, you can literally just diverge here straight onto there. Fantastic. If you want to come from the south and you want to go east, again, you can just diverge. Pretty cool. If you want to come from north to west, you've guessed it, we're diverging. And of course, west to south is also a diverge. Now we have our nice diamond shape. If we click on these signs, you can see by the flashing one which route are still remaining. We've only got one more to do on each one. And essentially, from these diamond arms that I just put in, you just do like a little curve. And the reason why we did this swapping over in the middle is so we can literally just do like that in the middle. Coming along this diamond, diverge up there, curve around there. Oh, bollocks, I drew it wrong. I drew it wrong. <laughs> I did that bit wrong. We're gonna have to do the entire thing again because there's no undo button. So from this one, we want to go around that way. You saw what? It's quite easy to see like the shape. So this one is obviously going to go off there and onto there. I don't know for some reason I went from this diverge around that way, but no, you want to come from that onto the diamond. All right, so there we are. There's our diverging diamond interchange. Now, the good thing about this one is there's only there's only four little bridges. So we've got these two bridges, which are pretty much the same as the Cloverleaf interchange. And we've just got these two little additional ones. Now, they only go over one lane each. So quite small, really. And then everything else is all at grade. Uh, we sort of still have the same problem as the original Cloverleaf interchange, uh, but not as severe. So you can see these middle roads under the bridges. You've got two different movements of traffic merging along one lane. Yeah, but these straight over ones, they're now just, just the one direction. So I imagine the traffic flow should be higher. Uh, but let's press play. Let's simulate it and see how it ends up. Our oh, traffic flow is actually lower. That's surprising. So our efficiency for this one is six efficiency points lower than the original Cloverleaf. So I am I am surprised by that. Again, that could be my drawing skills. Yeah, and if we break that down, the traffic flow was slightly slower. Uh, we actually used less concrete on this one. Yeah, that's, that's quite surprising, actually. But if we're using less concrete, that probably explains why the traffic flow is lower. And then the complexity was the same. Did I see we unlocked a picture there? Is that, that going to be this one? No, it's still the Cloverleaf. Okay, fair enough. I think these just unlock like for each level. They don't necessarily unlock depending on if you used a realistic one, which is a bit of a shame. But uh, otherwise, you might never see some of them, I guess. All right, so we'll clear this. And now we're going to look at some of the sort of a bit crazier ones. I quite like this one, but it's not the most sensible solution you've ever seen in the world. <laughs> uh, we're going to do our straight throughs east to west. So this sort of takes a bit from the diverging diamond in that we do the straight overs and then we put our diamonds in again. So we go from here straight across up to there. So we do that for all the corners. Yeah, I, I cocked up the bottom right one a bit. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we'll still have space though, we'll still have space. Uh, but essentially, say we're going north and we want to get east, people will come off this diverge and then they'll diverge again off here. So we'll put a little arm down, bridge over the top and that actually curves round. And then we go down and merge before these two bridges because obviously we don't want these bridges to be longer. Now you can see green cars, they come along here, diverge off over the bridge, round, 
back down and merge in there. Lovely. Now we can do the same on the opposite side. So people coming from the south, if they want to go west and come off there, up and over and merge in just before the bridge. So we should see some blue cars. There you go. Blue car coming around. Lovely jubbly. And then people coming from the east, if they want to go south, they'll come off this diverge. So we come over. And this one we have a choice. We can choose... If we want to, we can do a quick like that and merge in there. But I might just merge in with the bridge on top just because space limitations. So like that. So this one, we come around here and that's the network complete. And this is called the windmill interchange because it sort of looks like a windmill. You can see like you can really see like the movement. You can imagine this rotating as like a fan. Uh, but let's simulate. We've got 438 to beat efficiency score. Oh, yes. Not as good this one you can see the traffic flow it's our highest yet 85 but we used a lot more concrete that's well that's pretty much 33 percent more concrete that's because we've got six bridges and four of them are really long yeah, but the traffic flow was the best so that's our most efficient design in terms of traffic so far uh, another solution for this would just literally be a roundabout so we could draw our roundabout in and then just connect all of these up and there's our network complete, the roundabout. Uh, interested to see how this one's going to cope. It's probably not going to cope very well at all. Uh, oh yes, that is not good. Oh, it's blocked up, it's blocked up. It's just about surviving. There you go. <laughs> Efficiency 80. Uh, not the best. Uh, but as I as I sort of touched on in the last episode, we can we can make this a lot more efficient. All right, so this time, if we, if we draw a roundabout in first, we're going to do what I touched on in the last episode, which was a hamburger. So what we want to do, we want to go over that little bit back down straight through the same for the other direction and this is like a very popular solution in the uk we, we sort of call them a grade separated roundabout or grade separated junction at this point i could go down and up but i may as well just stay up all the way over all right so we've done the north to south and the east to west uh, now we just need to round about the other the other options in so we, we can just do that and then that. There you go. Network complete. So we've got the straight through separated. They pretty much just do their own thing. But then all the other routes, they need to go around the roundabout if they want to go somewhere. So people coming from the north, if they want to go east, they literally have to go around the entire roundabout. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be normal roundabout rules. It's just a bit of a free-for-all. If you look at this junction, there's not a lot of giving way. Yeah, but let's simulate this. Is it better than the normal roundabout? 80 is the score to beat. 263 way better uh, but obviously nowhere near as good as the original options and that's because this this takes up a lot less space so you can really really squeeze this in uh, if i'd drawn this a lot more efficiently you'd probably actually see that with the concrete used uh, but i didn't i went nice and big and if we stay on the old roundabout thing we've also got i don't know if you've ever heard of in england in particularly swindon uh, have you ever heard of the magic roundabout it looks terrifying uh, but it does actually make sense sort of so essentially it's lots of roundabouts joined together to make like an uber roundabout uh, so essentially you have like four roundabouts so you have like one for every junction so we'll, we'll put one there we'll do slightly bigger ones for over here just to make it a bit clearer they should all really be the same shape really right and then we'll connect all of these up and then we want to connect these roundabouts up so we'll go from this one over to that one and this one over to that one but now to take advantage of the actual roundabouts now we want to add like a few more arms in so if we want to get these people from east down to south at the moment they're going all the way around this giant roundabout they're just using it as a big roundabout we want them to come down this arm and then do that so now if you see this purple car he's decided to come down here he goes straight across there and then round this roundabout and then he's at his destination so if we just pretty much continue this through essentially we're just making another roundabout in the middle that says network complete but ignore that we're going to make it more efficient just by connecting all of these together like that so now it looks like a mess but i'm pretty sure if we give it a little bit of time things will clear up pretty quickly and this could actually be a really efficient design now yes there is a lot of giveawaying but take a look there's literally no bridges this is cheap cheap as chips uh, let's press simulate and see how it looks Oh, not bad. Not bad at all. So traffic flow, obviously, that's a lot lower. We were expecting that. But with the concrete used really low, our overall efficiency score is 402. So that's not bad. I think, to be honest, with a bit of tweaking as well, I look at that corner there. I really did not draw that very well. I think that could be a lot better. In fact, I'm going to draw it again. Right. Did I draw it neater? I'm not entirely sure, actually. 
<laughs> the network completer thing happened a lot sooner. Oh, there you go. There we go. So just by having a little bit more of a steady hand, we up the traffic flow to 62 and our overall efficiency 443, uh, which actually makes this the best design so far. <laughs> I'm not sure the complexity factor is quite accurate on this, but uh, we'll take it. We will take it. All right, so now we're going to do a proper major one. This is like one of the best looking ones. It's one of these in London on the M25. Yeah, but essentially we want to do our straight through roads. So we've got our straight through roads with our bridges over the top. Uh, we want to put the diamonds back in because this one's sort of a mix of everything we've seen so far. Or well, may maybe not the magic roundabout. Right, and now is where it gets really, really freaking cool. So this is called a turbine interchange because it sort of just looks like a cool turbine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's say we're coming from the south and we want to go west. So at the moment you can't you can't do that. You can you can go north, you can go east, but you can't go west. We're gonna come off our diamond diverging. We're gonna go over in a bridge, but sort of keep curving over. And this is where you can choose. Do you you can stay as a bridge, but I sort of, I wanna keep it realistic. I wanna save money. So we're gonna go back down, come over to there, over the top, back down, and merge in there. And then we sort of just repeat this. So now you can see this blue car. You can, you can come around there, over that bridge, over that bridge. Oh, he stopped there. I don't know why he stopped there. Why did he stop there? I don't know. That one didn't. Uh, now we just sort of rotate this round. So we've done it from this arm. So you can see on this, on this diamond road, we start at the end of it. So you can see the diverge is quite far away from this bridge. And the merge is quite close to it. So that just allows us to like rotate this around. So if we want to come from this arm, come around there, back down, over there. And we want to connect in as close to the bridge as possible because we started further away like that. Nice. So now we do this one over there, back down, up over there and cut as close in as we can. Back down, merge in. And the final one is just from this diamond road. And then we just try and merge in under that bridge. Network complete. And look how cool that looks. That does look decent. I'm a bit annoyed I messed up that one. It's a little bit wobbly. Uh, but interesting to see how this one works. It, it's going to be expensive. There's a lot of bridges going on. But let's simulate. It looks pretty cool, actually. It doesn't look too bad. Oh, it is, it is quite bad. Traffic flow, the highest by far, 87. So this one super efficient on the traffic. Uh, but because the amount of concrete used, 9,000 tons. The overall efficiency, not the best. 342. Uh, so surprisingly, the top <laughs> the top one, I, I don't really understand how that works. The top one was the magic roundabout. Uh, but I'm going to leave that one in because that looks absolutely wicked. Let's go back to the map. Yeah, look how cool that looks. It almost looks like my top left one, but like proper. But anyway, guys, thanks for joining. If you want to see me carry on with all these other levels that we've got to do, I'm going to try and do them a bit more like sensibly from now on, rather than this absolute carnage we got there. I'll try and keep it like sensible and neat looking like this turbine one we just did. But yeah, loving this game, hating the sound effects of it. That's why I turned them off. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> apart from that, cool game. Just please add an undo button. I need to undo. Uh, but anyway, guys, peace, love and bridges. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.